Hi everybody. Hi, it's the Christian Kid, um, 27, and today we're going to do day four of our book, uh, How to Relate to Impossible People. And uh, today's is day four, uh, The Mocker. So everybody's kind of, <clears throat> everybody's kind of been involved and um, with a mocker or mock themselves. I know I've done that before. Um, so we've all kind of had an experience with a mocker, whether it's us or somebody else. Um, and you know, it, it's not a nice thing um, to have happen, but it happens. And even in the Bible, it happens. Um, but there's ways that but there's ways that you can handle them, and uh, we're gonna find out about that today. So today's uh, Bible study comes from the book of Nehemiah again, and it's Nehemiah chapter two again, chapters ten to twenty, or verses ten to twenty. So I don't know if you can see that. Not very good. So, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 10 to 20. We will read that now. Okay, so it reads But when Sambalat the, Horon the Horonite and uh, Tobiah the Ammonite uh, official heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. So I arrived in Jerusalem. <clears throat> Three days later, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us except the donkey I was riding. After dark, I went through the valley uh, gate, past the jackal's well, and over the dung gate to inspect the broken walls and burn gates. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but my donkey couldn't get through the rubble. So, though it was still dark, I went up to the Kidron Valley and said, inspecting the wall before I turned back and entering again at the valley gate. The city officials did not know I had been out there or what I was doing, for I had not yet said anything to anyone about my plans. I had not yet spoken to Jewish leaders, the priests, the nobles, or the officials, or anyone in the administration. But now I said to them, You know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me, and about my conservation, con conversation sorry, with the king. They replied at once, Yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began to give work. But when Samuel, Tobiah, and Jotham, the Arab, heard about our plan, they scoffed contemporary. Contemptuously. Contemptuously. What are you doing? Are you rebelling against the king? They asked. I replied, The God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding the wall. But you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. So, we've read this our uh, reading for the for this uh, Bible study. So now it says that we are going to pray for determination to get the job done. So let's pray. So dear God, we come to you today, and we ask that you give us the determination to get through those tough times when people scoff and mock at us and put us down and say we can't do it and that. Um, we'll never get there. What are you thinking? And they laugh at us and hurt us. That you give us the determination and the strength to, to get through it. We pray that you hold us up and that you will um, 
lead us through and that everything will go according to your plan. In your name, amen. So, times get tough and sometimes it is really, really hard um, to get through those times, especially when people are, you know, mean and they tell you, well, you'll never get there. What are you thinking? Are you crazy? And stuff like that. And sometimes it really crushes people because what they want to do or what that dream or that passion that they have, you know, means something to them. And it crushes them. And uh, sometimes getting back on your feet after something like that can really be hard. And uh, that's why we need uh, God there for us. And he's always there for us. But he will support us and lift us up when we are weak and we're falling. He can help us. So, first question. Is the people living in Jerusalem area were discouraged, depressed, and defenseless? They needed the city wall for protection and unity. How did Nehemiah motivate them to get started rebuilding? So, he, he Nehemiah told them about, uh, about what, you know, what they were going through. He said that, you know, this place is really bad. It's, it's been through a lot. We have nothing. We have nothing right now, but we can rebuild it. And he said that, you know, they could rebuild it, rebuild the walls and the gates and stuff, and, like, end everything. So there was, he, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. He put that there um, to motivate them to say, this can end. This all can go away. You don't have to take this from other people. And that kind of got their spirits going and they were like okay let's do this so the fact that he said actually it's in verse 17 it says but now I said to them you know very well what trouble we are in Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace so basically like I said he gave them he gave them that little bit of hope that they needed um, a little bit of energy that they needed to get through and God will do that for us too so uh, number two uh, who were Amalat and Tobiah and why were they opposed to the wall getting rebuilt um, so there were four nights in the Amnon night uh, I guess they were people who were against um, against them, the Israelites, um, they didn't really think it was, you know, worth anything, I guess, they didn't think that it was, uh, necessary to have that, they thought it was really dumb, but it was funny. Um, yeah. Their officials, and they just thought that, you know, it was kind of really stupid to to do it. So three is how did Nehemiah respond to the mockery and ridicule? Um, so they were sorry to add to the last one. They were a red Arabian. Um, so number three to answer that, he said that uh, the God, our God, our God in heaven, would help them, and uh, that they had nothing in it um, because they were so against it. Um, so in verse twenty, it says, "I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding the wall." But you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem. So, the, uh, 
he spoke to them in truth. Um, it may have been like harsh, like blunt, but the truth, um, truth always comes out. And uh, if you're wrong about something, and someone speaks the truth, pretty much ten times out of ten, you don't have anything to say. Um, I know when I was wrong about things, and uh, like if I was mocking something or making fun of something, and somebody came back with the truth, it was like, ouch. I'm like, well, thinking like, well, what do I come back with that? And it really isn't anything, especially when they come back with the truth. And um, that's what he spoke of. He spoke of truth. He spoke of God's word. And that backs everything up. Basically, it was like a zipper being pulled over their mouth. They couldn't couldn't say anything. It was like, yeah. It was like, you just governed. So the need, for the need today, that was it for the questions. And the need for today is pray that the Lord will help you handle ridicule and mo uh, mocking remarks. So some of us um, tend to take things really seriously, more seriously than others. I know that I take some things more seriously than others. And, you know, it's harder to let things go. Um, maybe because some people have uh, bad experiences in life like that, like... Um, some people react to things because of experiences that they've had um, in their life um, is triggering to them. So uh, it may make them respond more negatively to things like that. So let's pray about that. Um, so God, we, we pray that you will help us handle the ridicule and the mocking of our from other people. And that we will respond in a way that is in that reflects you and that reflects Jesus Christ. Um, that is of truth and not of mockery and ridicule itself. That we don't start arguments and that we don't start things that you know can can't be finished. Um, we pray that we uh, that your hands be on us the whole time in your name. Amen. So, that's it for today. So, I hope you enjoyed this. This one was a little easier than the last one. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's getting interesting. So, I hope you guys will um, continue to come out and watch these. As I'm having a lot of fun making them. I really like them. I like sharing them with you. And I hope that we can, uh, we can keep going. Anyways, I will talk to you later, and uh, I'll see you with the next one. Thanks. See you later.